Hello, BookTube. We're resuming my long-neglected library tour. <laughs> Sorry about that. Events got in the way. Wonderful events, guests in the house, and then uh, distractions of other kinds. I went to shut off all the technology last night, read all night long. When I turned the technology on this morning, Mark Richardson and Richardson Reads and Jason Harrigan both had new videos. <sighs> my peer group putting pressure on me. <laughs> uh, so we're going to resume this library tour, as you can tell. I am now down in puppy territory because <laughs> sooner or later, when you're doing a library tour, you have to face the reality that you're going to deal with the shelves down near the floor. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to continue along. We're just we're on this wall of history, uh, general nonfiction, but mostly history. So those of you who aren't interested in history, uh, it's going to be a bit before you have anything to listen to here. Uh, and there, I have I don't have. Uh, wall size bookcases on this wall. I wish I did. I wish I had just three standard 10 foot tall bookcases on this wall. But so instead I have a bunch of little bookcases all sort of mushed together. And uh, we're dealing with one of those here and it has fairly narrow shelves. And I thought that I'd be able to do two of these shelves per video, but it hasn't worked out that way. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's likely that we have two more videos in this particular bookcase to go. And then I'll have to figure out some other kind of filming apparatus. Uh, so we're going to just continue along with this shelf. And the, the first one is a transverse book. It's a paperback uh, release. It's fairly new. And it isn't, it isn't, well, it is technically history. It, it, I put it here because I don't, I didn't want to get rid of it. I really, really enjoyed it. This is The Gourmand's Way by Justin Spring. Take a look at that cover. <laughs> I see it's a wafer thin. <laughs> They're all eagerly watching to see how their magic works. <laughs> uh, and this is um, Six Americans in Paris and the birth of a new gastronomy. And those uh, <clears throat> Americans are uh, Alexis Lachine, the great writer M.F.K. Fisher, uh, A.J. Liebling, uh, Richard Olney, Alice B. Toklas, and of course, Julia Child. <laughs> and this is just a sort of a collective galloping biography of the six of them and is tremendous reading. Just tremendous fun. I am not a gourmand. To put it mildly, <laughs> I am not a gourmand. I could not care less about such things, and yet I found the thing interesting, fascinating. Uh, and it passed a pretty strict litmus test. A couple of them, actually. Uh, I, I mean, I, I know A.J. Liebling used to have diehard fans. I'm pretty sure his diehard fans have all died off. <laughs> uh, but the two uh, litmus tests that it had to pass was one... The writing about M.F.K. Fisher had to not embarrass her, and she's one of the, she's a, a fantastic prose stylist of the 20th century, and it didn't. And two, the writing about Julia Child has to satisfy me, and that's not easy to do, and it did. So, <laughs> so I recommend the book. Uh, and then we'll move on to the shelf itself. Oh, okay, great. All right, we've uh, we've I've talked about this author many many times, and I've had these books many many times in many many formats until finally, random chance at the Brattle Bookshop here in Boston, brought me penguins. <laughs> penguin trade paperbacks of these books. Generally speaking, I would like that little penguin colophon to be on all of my books. <laughs> so if I find this, I, and at the time, I always send these things out to people because they are so good as introductions to, to their time period and to their main subject that I always send them out when people say, you know, I want a, I want a book of history that's totally engrossing. So at the time that I found these Penguin Trade paperbacks, I didn't have copies of these books, so I just grabbed them. These are C.V. Wedgwood. This is The King's War and the King's Peace. Uh, just two, uh, two big volumes about uh, the, the England of King Charles I. The King's Peace is a study of that England, a study of the people, the normal society, the eating, the shipping, the living, the uh, the dying, the praying, the reading. It, it's an unbelievably involving survey of a historical period. And then this one, which is almost twice the size, is uh, the war. Uh, the war that eventually that eventually cost King Charles his throne and his head. Uh, and as I've mentioned, there's a third volume. <laughs> we've, we've seen it before on this channel. I've talked about it all the time. The third volume here is called A Coffin for King Charles. And if these two exist in a big beautiful penguin trade paperback that must exist too in the same thing and i just have never seen it <laughs> i have never seen it sooner or later i will this was a long time ago that i got these at the brattle uh ordinarily if you find two things like this at the brattle bookshop uh it means that the third thing is there and will rotate into their inventory very soon and 
I missed it. So I don't, I, whoever had the set the first time, that third volume went to somebody else. But I will find uh, the uh, Penguin Classic History volume of A Coffin for King Charles someday. And I have it otherwise. It's fantastic. It's about the trial and execution of the king. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Then we have, okay. <laughs> all right. So this is going to be a study in trilogies, complete and otherwise. Because that first one, uh, Wedgwood never meant it to be a trilogy, but nevertheless, it is. And the second one was very much intended to be a trilogy. And it's fantastic. It also is something that I give out just immediately to people when they want engrossing history. History that will just pull you in and show you why it's great. Uh, and I've done that many times. I sort of made a mental note when I got this latest trilogy that I absolutely would not do that this time. That the recommendation is enough. And isn't that, isn't that partly true? I mean, the, I'm not, I'm not special pleading for myself. I am still sending out books every day, but the recommendation is enough, isn't it? I mean, we live in a world with the internet where, you know, cheap $2 copies of used titles of almost any description are available to anybody, anytime. I don't need to find these things anymore for people. I, I used to feel a very incumbent duty to at least try to do that because Boston was a mecca for used bookstores and I knew a lot of people who didn't live anywhere near even one. But, well, anyway, anyway, the trilogy here is uh, the Pax Britannica trilogy by James Morris. Uh, in these old, these are the, uh, the old Har Harcourt, yes, Harcourt Brace Ivanovich trade paperbacks, the green, the blue, and the purple. And this is a study of uh, English life, society, letters, uh, most especially larger-than-life personalities from the era of Queen Victoria, you know, through her, I mean, her, her accession, her, her rise to the throne, the rise of the British Empire, all the way to the third volume, Farewell of the Trumpets, which is, as you can see, uh, the shorthands on the cover is, is the end of all that. And this is... This was the last, uh, these, as far as I know, were the last books that James Morris wrote while he was still a man. And then he became Jan Morris and has become famous for uh, her travel writing. Just fantastic travel writing, a vast amount of it. Uh, but is great no matter what, she writes. And uh, this, <laughs> I absolutely love this trilogy. Absolutely love it. Even though all it is, really, is, is just a very smart collection of great historical anecdotes. Uh, but I, this is a classic example. I think I, at the Brattle one day, I think I found Farewell the Trumpets in this trade paper. I like these Harcourt trade paperbacks. So I, I got it and I thought, well, you know, yeah, I better come back tomorrow and the next day because whoever unloaded this unloaded the other two. And sure enough, that time I was successful. Uh, but this, this next book is a lack of success. <laughs> this is exactly what I want. What is this, Meridian? Yes, this is a Meridian trade paperback of a work that Samuel Eliot Morrison did. He did the Oxford History of the American People. Uh, and he did uh, one enormous volume. You, If you've gone to yard sales or whatever, you will have seen it. It's a big blue dust jacketed hardcover that is always being given away, 25 cents, a dollar. You just don't have any idea. If you have ignored it at those yard sales, you just don't have any idea how great this writing is. It just is amazing. If the next time you see that big fat book, you should grab it. Uh, and I've seen it. I see it all the time. But I want this. I want this work of Morrison's in these Meridian trade paperbacks. This is only volume three, uh, 19, 1869 through the death of John F. Kennedy. Just and there are two volumes before this, and they both are in. I know they exist in this form. I've seen them. I even once upon a time had a box set of these trade paperbacks. Got rid of them all. But that is what I want. So I'm not bothering with the. I don't think probably make a liar out of myself. I don't think I have the big fat hardcover at the moment because this is the format that I want. Uh, oh, okay. All right, well, this next one, these, these are scattered all over the place and they really shouldn't be. We've talked, we've seen this in the last few shelves. Oxford did a series of big fat books on various eras of, of uh, English history. And this is The Later Tudors uh, by J.D. Mackey. Uh, and it's, you know, you've, we've seen Anglo-Saxon England, we've seen Tudor England. This is just a, a, you know, a more detailed study of uh, Elizabeth and, and uh, Mary <laughs> and is very, very good. But they really ought to be together, right? <laughs> they ought to be with each other. Uh, oh, okay, fantastic. All right, this is uh, uh, Fred Anderson. This is almost certainly going to be his masterpiece. This is The Crucible of War. Uh, <laughs> about the Seven Years' War. This is just so good. This is just such a, it's a big thing. It's a chunkster. Uh, but it's 
it's just, and it's, it's also well-trod ground. I have read much earlier American historians on this same period who are tough to beat. And this book doesn't beat them for eloquence, but it, it does for, you know, insightful research. And a sharp kind of modern writing on its own, the kind of oratund rhetorical periods of the 19th century Boston historians, has unfortunately fallen out of favor. <laughs> it's made for great reading. It still does. You can find those books and they make for great reading. Francis Parkman, <laughs> for instance, I figure I could go on and on about it. <laughs> he wrote about this same period that is the death of, of General Wolf on the cover there. And you, it, it, his writing, well, Fred Anderson would be the first person to admit it. <laughs> He'd be the first person to agree that what he's doing here is not trying to outdo Parkman. Rather, this is just a more, much more recent, more contemporary uh, and broader source book. Boy, oh boy, though, first-rate military history. Uh, and then we're done. We're done with this last one. This is... Oh, talk about first-rate military history. Okay, this is uh, another oft-written subject, but for my mind, pound for pound, one of the best books ever written on it. This is David Howarth's 1066, The Year of the Conquest. Another Penguin book. We start as... We finish as we started, uh, but a tiny little thing. Uh, just his uh, his book on the Norman Conquest. That is great. <laughs> that is great. I have read books ten times this length on the Norman Conquest, and there, I, I never recommend any book on the Norman Conquest more often than I do this one. Just love it. So, so insightful and so wonderfully written. Oh, uh, And that's it. That is the next shelf. The only reason I'm not going to barge right on is because it... We're at we're at what twelve minutes now, and the next one it would would double that. And what's the point of that? So so we'll just stick with this, and we'll do the next one uh, tomorrow, uh, and that will finish this little bookcase, and we can just move on. Oh my God, <laughs> the next bookcase is a prime. It is a crying example of why I need more bookshelves on this wall because there are books stacked on top of books on top of books. Uh, I don't know how we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. If I figure it out, this. All, the only logistical challenge left to me is how to get up. <laughs> I don't need to film that. I'll try on my own. I'll try a whole bunch of different approaches. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube. <laughs>